This conflict has been devastating from a human perspective, the toll that it's taken on Ukrainians. More than a quarter of the population displaced, thousands of individuals killed. And what we're seeing, particularly in the conduct of the way the Russians are carrying out this war, is what appear to be widespread violations of international law. There are four categories of crimes that are so serious that the international community has created mechanisms for justice at the international level. And those are war crimes, crimes against humanity, genocide, and the crime of aggression. And it may be that we're seeing all four of those crimes being committed in Ukraine. So the most obvious set of crimes we're seeing committed are war crimes. And that's because we know that there are very clear, specific acts that invading armies or combating parties are not allowed to do in the, in the context of that war. And we're seeing that action pretty clearly from the Russians. Things like carrying out attacks that disproportionately harm civilians compared to any legitimate military objective, killing civilians, rape of civilians, widespread looting, forced displacement of the population, all things that when conducted as part of a policy of how they conduct a war, those are war crimes. The second category is crimes against humanity. When you see acts like murder of civilians, of forced displacement of population, of widespread use of rape, when you see that systematically and you see that as a policy, that starts to be raised to the level of crimes against humanity. And we may be seeing that happening in Ukraine when you see the number of people killed in places like Bucha. So the crime of aggression is a really interesting case because uh, there have been no prosecutions for the crime of aggression since the Nuremberg trials. Because the International Criminal Court didn't get jurisdiction to prosecute that crime until 2018, they can't actually investigate the crime of aggression in the context of the Russian invasion of Ukraine, even though arguably that would be the easiest crime to convict a Russian of in this conflict. It's been proposed by a number of legal scholars that the UN or a group of countries stand up an independent investigatory and prosecutorial mechanism to actually go after that particular crime in the context of Ukraine. And then you've got genocide. Genocide is the most serious international crime, and it's reserved for the, the gravest of circumstances. Genocide is committing acts with the intent to destroy a population, and particularly a nationality, a race, a religion, or an ethnic group. Typically, in genocide, what we're looking for is mass murder of people, but genocide doesn't have to just be murder. The Ukrainian government has accused the Russians of attempting to destroy the idea of Ukraine, the existence of Ukraine. If that is indeed what the Russians intend to do, there may be a case that they are attempting to commit genocide in Ukraine as well. For the ICC to be able to achieve accountability, it's going to require three things. First, it's going to require evidence of serious crimes. We've certainly seen evidence about a number of crimes that we've talked about happening on the ground, but what we're gonna need beyond that and beyond the sort of context of what's happening on the ground is understanding who's responsible for those crimes. These are all individual crimes and the ICC prosecutes individuals, not states, not military units, not policy units, just individuals. And so to establish the facts of the case, the ICC is going to need to understand the structure of the Russian military, who has command and control, who's giving orders, who's creating policies, and who's executing them on the ground. The second thing is you've got to have jurisdiction over the crimes. In this case, they've got jurisdiction over war crimes, crimes against humanity, and genocide because Ukraine has granted them that jurisdiction. Ukraine is not a member of the ICC, nor is Russia, but after the invasion of Crimea, the Ukrainians gave the ICC authority to investigate crimes committed on their territory. The last thing they need and the hardest thing they're going to have to achieve is control over a defendant. They're going to have to actually secure a defendant to prosecute, and that's going to require someone to be captured on the battlefield at a senior level. It's going to require someone to travel outside of Russia to a state that's willing to prosecute them or turn them over for prosecution. Or it's going to require a change in the government or government policy in Russia, giving them an incentive to actually cooperate with an international criminal court. And so that's going to take some time. That's a long-term, patient, persistent uh, play that we're going to have to wait on until we have that opportunity to actually secure a defendant to go to trial.